originally has a spiritual body in the spiritual world but in this material world we have a material body and it's temporary and we keep changing our bodies life after life so obviously it's a very there is everything in the material world the way we run our life in this material body with this material body is not quite normal or not quite 
nobody is satisfied with that. Definitely that is not the final, absolute, perfect position of the living entity. Therefore, the Varnashrama system, very clearly the system is ultimately for the living entity to get liberated from this material world. The objective of the system, the objective of all the assignment of duties to different uh, Varnas and Ashramas is very clearly to liberate the living entity from this abnormal situation of entrapment within this body and to achieve a spiritual body, go back to Vaikuntha and serve the Lord. That is the objective of Varnashrama system. Now within this Varnashrama system, as here Manu says, that he created the Brahmanas who are full of austerity, knowledge, mystic power and averse to sense gratification. They are averse to sense gratification. In other words, you know, there are Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. If you see the rules and regulations of each ashrama of these, each, each, each Varnas, very clearly you will see a gradation of sense gratification from Tamoguna to Rajaguna to Sattoguna to no sense gratification. A Brahmana therefore he is closer to his spiritual destination. Therefore he is averse to sense gratification. A Brahmana is respected more within the society. Of the four Varnas, the Brahmana gets the highest respect because his soul is in that position. Kshatriya gets the next respect, Vaishya, Shudra. So there is a hierarchy of spiritual status of each of these Varnas. There is a hierarchy. It is not based on body alone. It is not a caste system based on birth. Every living entity is in a progressive path, expected to be in a progressive path. Of course, this material world is such that Lord has given freedom. One can be in progressive path or in degressive path. He can go down to hellish planets, he can go down into lower gunas. One can ad advance into higher gunas also. So that choice is given. So one has to have great respect for this Varnashrama social system, social order that God has created. And in this different levels of, you know, respect is also given, uh, is well established, especially in our Indian culture. This is very clear. Somebody who is Brahmana, who is Sadhu, who is Sanyasi, you know, at different level, Brahmana, he can be a Sanyasi, he can be a Sanyasi of, you know, beginning Sanyasi to, to advanced Sanyasi of a Paramahamsa. A Paramahamsa is completely you know, he is already situated in the transcendental platform, but living in this material body. That means he has become free from all this sense gratification. So Prabhupada wanted to create a society of Brahmanas. Many times he has said, I am trying to create a society of Brahmanas who will guide the rest of the world. So we can see here one of the main things is full of austerity, knowledge and mystic power. This is the qualities of a Brahmana. Not simply knowledge, full of austerities. Austerity means telling no to the conditioned mind, that is austerity. The mind and the body, if once taken birth in this material world, it has got its vegas, its pushes, its urges, which needs to be ignored, thinking and understanding with the knowledge that this is that of the body and this is not of mine, and I am supposed to respond to it with knowledge and filter these responses in a manner in which what is pleasing to the Lord, he will accept those responses. What is not pleasing to the Lord, he will reject. 
So constantly a Brahmana is vigilant about the pleasure of the Lord, what pleases the Lord, and he accepts and rejects these urges. In other words, a Brahmana is an expert manager of the urges of the body and the mind, is an expert manager of the yantra urges with the objective of life, which is to transcend this material body, transcend karma, and engage in positive, transcendental, devotional service to the Lord, which is the goal. So now, so the Brahmanas are glorified as being averse to sense gratification. So a very fundamental question can be asked. If the advancement is zeroing down on sense gratification, If the advancement, spiritual advancement constitutes zeroing down on sense gratification, then what is it that the jiva, the living entity can enjoy? Sense gratification to out. Very obvious. Then the question comes, why we are given senses at all? If I am designed, I am born with these senses. So why I am given these senses? No doubt we are given these senses because we wanted to enjoy them independently. Now the question arises, in that, in that case, I am averse to sense gratification. I go back to the spiritual world. There also should I be averse to sense gratification. Because here I am practicing as a Brahmana, averse to sense gratification. I am averse to sense gratification. That is perfection. So if I try for perfection of zero sense gratification, then in the spiritual world, what is it that I... It is said that Ananda may obhyasat. Ananda is the goal of total existence. So what is it that I am constitutionally entitled for? This we have to understand. Then you will have a motivation how to restrain sense gratification. Then you will have, you will have proper motivation through knowledge. Then how, what is the place of sense gratification? In the material world, what is the place of sense gratification in the spiritual world? A person means his soul, which is his personality, his soul. Then he has his, his, own, his own self. Then he has his identity with the world outside. Then he has his mind, he has his intelligence, then he has his senses. This is a picture of a person in the material world. In the spiritual world also there is no difference. These are all, only here it is, it is, the, all this personality is a combination of soul plus yantra. In the spiritual world all these limbs of intellect, mind, senses, they are all part of the soul, integral part of the soul. Non-different, oneness is a variety in one spiritual body. There is, no, there is no outside body and inside soul. Here there is inside soul and there is outside body. So the outside body actually is imitating a spiritual body. So in the spiritual world we have a spiritual body which is not strange. Now because we are not aware of it, looks like we are taking that spiritual body. No, you are not taking, it is you. That spiritual body has got senses. So in the spiritual world, what is the function of my senses if I train myself to be totally free from sense gratification? Will my senses have any gratification in the spiritual world? Question. Will my senses have any gratification in the spiritual world? Obviously it has to be there. Because senses are there, it has to be there. Then what is this freedom from ours to sense gratification?
in the spiritual world every sense gratification is a prasadam from the lord it is a reciprocation and a gift from the lord you don't seek that in the spiritual world you don't seek sense gratification but sense gratification is there you get it without seeking so for the jiva seeking sense gratification is the sin sense gratification is not the sin taking mahaprasadam is not a sin you seeking gratification from that mahaprasadam gratification from that mahaprasadam it will be small it is not a sin but it is if you are seeking from ordinary food definitely it is a sin so in the spiritual world purity depends in the spiritual world we don't seek sense gratification then what do you seek something you should seek no in the material world everybody is seeking happiness happiness pleasure 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 in spiritual world what the jeevas are jeevas are seeking 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 what they don't seek pleasure but they seek satisfaction of pleasing krishna so jeevas are entitled for transcendental satisfaction and not entitled to seek sense gratification that it is called transcendental pleasure transcendental pleasure means pleasure which is beyond the senses he seeks what is that it is satisfaction of serving the lord that is what in practical devotion service we are all trained here how to learn to awaken your original pleasure your original pleasure will you don't even call it pleasure it is a original satisfaction that satisfaction is greater than pleasure sensual pleasure so self pleasure is different sense pleasure is different we are entitled to seek self pleasure what is our original self pleasure self pleasure is in the satisfaction of pleasing krishna and it is krishna's business to provide for your senses in the spiritual world in fact the devotee if the sense if, if the if the prasadam if the in for your senses are are uh, are so intoxicating or it, it distracts you from your seva you will say no just like here also suppose prasadam is given very tasty prasadam now you taste taste you go on eating eating you should think that will it disturb my seva will it disturb my service later no no i shall regulate even though it is prasadam in krishna book propad that there is a leela between rukmini and krishna and when rukmini was fanning krishna she became ecstatic and her hand froze bodily ecstasy her hand froze but she was cursing those ecstasies why because pleasure is greater in fanning than in those ecstasies pleasure was in serving the lord and satisfying the lord i stopped my fanning the lord i stopped pleasing the lord i don't want such ecstasy so transcendental satisfaction is what the soul is entitled to and soul is entitled to take for his senses take prasad
if the lord gives prasadam means mercy mercy you don't seek you don't chase and capture mercy you seek no doubt you seek but you don't chase and capture sense gratification in the material world we are only doing that chasing and capturing sense gratification in the spiritual world we don't chase and capture sense gratification it is bestowed upon us mercifully and the devotee receives it with gratitude everything is full of gratitude to the lord for receiving his mercy and the lord pours in abundance to such a devotee who does not seek something seek gratification whereas the devotee is seeking seva seeking service to the lord so just see the soul the personality has so many layers as i said the soul then you have a social identity then you have your 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 uh, uh, intellectual identity then you have your mind then you have your senses body right so in the spiritual world also not only here free ourselves from sense gratification sense gratification means gratification from senses up to social ego the soul is even beyond that social ego you may subject you may be subjected to humiliation from the society that means your social ego will be destroyed demolished that is total dukha just like physical pain and pleasure so there are pains and pleasure for mind there is pain and pleasure for the intellectual body there is pain and pleasure for your social ego body the pain and pleasure so the devotee he tries to satisfy krishna irrespective of pain or pleasure for his senses it is not that he is expecting that oh i will always be painless my senses will always be painless no in the spiritual world also you will have pain gopis are suffering in pain when krishna disappears he is a pain no greater pain than that isn't it so pain is there in the spiritual world the what is above all those things the soul is enjoying devotional service transcendental relish is there in remembering krishna connecting ourselves to krishna and serving krishna seeking to serve krishna that is what here now let us hear what actually there are two kinds of occupation one occupation in the material world is sense gratification and the other occupation is spiritual activity to satisfy the lord by his glorification by glorifying the lord the soul gets satisfaction the satisfaction of devotion service is actually the soul pleasure that is our constitutional pleasure starting with glorification of the lord so many types of services are there those who engage in sense gratification are called demons those who we have to change give us want to become a devotee we have to change our philosophy of life we have to change our philosophy of pleasure if we don't change the philosophy of pleasure then we will fall under this category those who engage in sense gratification are called demons those who engage in sense gratification means those who are seeking constantly again we all have sense gratification condition soul but if you are not seeking that you are seeking krishna's pleasure even though sense gratification may be there it is it won't call you won't be called we won't be under the category of demons demons are those who are constantly seeking gratification how to increase the gratification for my gross senses how to increase the gratification for my mind including some devotees say i want peace of mind they will say 
I don't want to do this service because it disturbs my peace, peace of mind. So that is another gratification. Peace of mind is another gratification. Let there be disturbance, but what has to be done will be done for the Lord. So then, for the intellect, jnana, knowledge, or for the, you know, see, for jnana, for instance, gratification is what? Speculation. When you don't understand something, you go on speculating. It is called intellectual gratification. So a devotee is not seeking intellectual gratification. See, then one may ask, should I not think about Shastras? Should I not think about what Prabhupada's purpose? That is not speculation. That comes under seva. When you hear shavanam, it comes under shavanam. Submissively you are repeatedly hearing what Prabhupada says. That means you are hearing the knowledge from you are receiving knowledge. You are not engaged in speculation, speculative activity. Then there is, you know, social ego. Devotion service we do, but we are seeking social ego. What is social ego? We are seeking food for social ego. What is that? I should be appreciated as a pure devotee. I should be a big devotee. Not, you know, if you think you want to be a pure devotee in your heart, no problem. But if you think that the society has to think I am a pure devotee, then you have a problem. In fact, all of us are supposed to be ambitious about becoming a pure devotee in our heart. That is the goal of entire Prabhupada's books. But if you think that my goal of life is the society of Vaishnavas considers me as a pure devotee, then there, there is a problem. So, seeking gratification for gross senses, seeking emotional gratification of the mind, seeking jnanic gratification for your intellect, seeking, everywhere I am saying seeking, it will be there. When you, when you, if you, when you are anxious to receive knowledge from the Lord in the heart, that is not seeking. When you are seeking on your own to get it, then that is seeking. When you take Krishna Prasadam, that by Lord's arrangement that comes before you, you taste it nightly, you honor it, that is not sense gratification. So all these things, seeking and seeking up to social ego, forget about, uh, you know, I was, talk I was talking about social ego of being praised by everybody as a great devotee. Even lower than that is, you know, you want the whole world to praise, the community of Vaishnavas should praise you to a very capable person he is. He's got very, you know, he's done this, he's done that, I have done this, I have done this, I'm capable. This is another level of seeking that ego, seeking food for the social ego. They are ideal thing, idealistic thing. That again, seeking social, seeking is different. A senior Vaishnava will come and say, very good, what you have done is very good. That you take it as prasham, that is different, you don't seek. In fact, when that comes, you take as prasham and you are very modest about it. Look at how, when Manu was praised by Kardam Muni, in the end Prabhupada says, the, the verse says, after describing the greatness of emperor's manifold qualities and activities, great activity, Manus, glorified. Who? Kardamani glorified. The sage became silent. And the emperor, feeling modesty, addressed him as follows. That means suddenly you will feel humble. When your activities and your qualities are praised by somebody, the devotee feels humble. Humble. The question comes, why should he feel humble? 
Okay. What he sees, what he saw truth, truly in me, he glorified. Why should I feel humble? What is the philosophy behind it? What is the knowledge behind it? Even though something which he seen in me, he has told, I feel humble. Because he understands that all these things are the mercy of Guru and Krishna. My ability to act, my good qualities, have all come costlessly from Guru and Krishna. I am having it, no doubt, but I don't think I have earned it. This is the meaning of costless. I don't think I have earned it. When you earn something, the material world, the, 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 the nature of the material world is that everybody has a consciousness, has a feeling that it's called fruity mental. I have earned this. It is mine. Which is a fact also. In the material world, it's a fact also. Unless you have done your karma, according to your karma, you, only you have got your body, what you have, name, fame, everything you have earned, no doubt. Which is a fact. But it, when it comes to a devotee who is representing the Lord, the qualities and the activity that he does is extraordinary. It is not within his karma jurisdiction at all. He knows that. When he knows that, when somebody praises him, he feels modest. Guru and Krishna's mercy. So, there has to be appreciation, there has to be praise in the Vaishnava community, but in a regulated manner it should be, because we cannot, you know, go on in an unregulated manner. In an unregulated manner you can glorify and appreciate people in the spiritual world. Here there is, a regulation is there, because what happens, suppose, let's say, I, somebody is the authority, you go on praising that person. If he is in a wrong platform, he will go on shadowing. Instead of going down, making more and more humble, he will become more and more proud. Yes, yes, my authority told me I am a great fellow. So generally we are very reserved. In, but yet appreciation is required. That is regulated. We, we don't make it zero. We cannot make it zero. We should not make it zero. We are not Mayavadis. We are not against appreciation, we are not against respect. We dabble with respect our whole life. The spiritual world full of respect for people we are dabbling with. We should know how to manage respects everywhere. But not abuse respect, but use respect. When you demand respect for yourself, that is called abusing respect. Respect is absolute. Philosophy of respect is absolute. Vaishnavas have to respect. But they have to know how to handle this respect. Give respect for everyone, but don't expect any respect for oneself. This is a philosophy of respect. Maya, they say, all these things, Maya, respect is Maya. But we don't say that. We are in a personalist world. Respect and love is part of the spiritual world. It's part of the spiritual world. So we have to learn how to live in a society. In an absolute sense we are a social being. Not only here we are a social being. We are a social being in the spiritual world. So we have to learn how to be, how to respond to a, an absolute society of Vaishnavas. We have to learn. It is not easy. My philosophy is very easy. Make everything zero and go alone on your own clothes. Neti, 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 boom. Am Brahmasmi, that's all. End. So simple it is. But Vaishnava perfection is not simple. <laughs> you have to deal with people. You have to deal with respect. You, have, you need to develop Vaishnava qualities to enter into the spiritual world. And the gift of that is nothing compared to Brahmananda. The, the result of that is Bhakti, love of Krishna. The, the ananda of pleasure of Krishna, serving Krishna, is something which is, which the Brahmananda is, just like the Shastras compare, how much water is there in a hoof print of a calf. That much water is the happiness of Brahmananda, compared to a 
ocean of water the ocean of ananda is there in transcendental world in vaikuntha world any questions jay grandarachi mad bhagavatam ki jay jagat guru shil prabhupad ki jay